Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Parsons Technical Webinar Series. I'm your host, Jessica Bennett. Uh, we're very excited for today's webinar, which will be the final one for 2022, that will be presented by Dr. Hayden Collins on Facility Condition Assessment in a Box, Ready-Made Solutions for Holistically Managing and Optimizing Capital Asset Portfolios. Uh, next slide, please. So a few housekeeping items up front. We'll be keeping all phone lines muted during the presentation to limit background noise. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, you can either uh, post them in the chat or you can raise your hand at the end during the Q&A and ask it live. This webinar has been approved for one PDH credit. If you'd like to receive a certificate for that, there is an attendance form that will be posted in the chat uh, at a link. You can download it. There are also four multiple choice questions you'll need to answer that are on that form and will also be posted in the chat during the webinar. If you can't access the form for any reason, you can reach out to us and request it and we'll send it to you. Uh, and finally, this webinar is being recorded and it will be available on our YouTube channel in the next few days if you uh, missed anything or want to refer back to the, the recording. So a brief agenda, we'll introduce uh, Dr. Collins first. Uh, he'll present a core value moment followed by the technical presentation, and we'll wrap up at the end with a Q&A session. Uh, Hayden is a facility analyst and a project manager for Parsons Capital's project team. He has over 20 years experience conducting facility assessments, developing capital renewal and long-term budgetary projections, and improving facility operations. In particular, his experience includes planning and executing large multi-site FCA projects, optimizing client resources, uh, preventing operational interruptions and identifying and applying green solutions to achieve cost savings. He has a master's in leadership and a doctor of education in organizational leadership. And with that, I'll turn it over to Hayden for the core value moment. Cool. Thank you. That sounded really good, by the way. I like the guy. Uh, well, core values. What I wanted to talk about was sustainability. And I'm going to bring this to everyone's attention. This is key for this entire presentation. If you don't get this, this is going to be hard, but understand sustainability and understand what we're going to do here. Now, shift gears, innovation. The innovation part of this, now keep in mind, this is my example here I'm going to use is the University of California. But everybody is in these same shoes. Everybody has played the same FCA game, facility condition assessment game for years and years and years. You would go out, you would ask for something to fix something in your building. You would do it as a system wide issue. You want to replace your HVA system or something like that. And you would ask for thousands and thousands of dollars. The accounting professionals, on the other hand, really look at this from the point of view of what they have available and how much they can fund you with. So the accounting professionals will say, you know what, you've asked for thousands and thousands of dollars every year, and you're asking for the same HVAC system upgrade every year. We keep giving you money every year. So we're going to give you, you know, a percentage of what you ask for. And as you get the percentage of what you ask for, guess what's going to happen the following year? You're going to come back and basically say, I didn't get to replace the system. I need to replace the system and I need more money. And it's an ever evolving circle over and over and over again. So to mix these two together, what we've done with the University of California, we got very innovative um, with their program. And I'll briefly describe the levels. A level one assessment we'll talk about is just buildings. A level three assessment is systems. And a level five assessment would be components. So for those of us that are really not familiar with F FCA, let, let's picture it as a car. Your level one is your entire car. Your level three is the set of tires and your level five is one tire. So every year you've asked to replace all all the tires, but you've only got enough money to replace one. Mix in sustainability. Go out and determine that in your facility, how are you going to best meet your energy needs? Are you going to replace things with energy efficient systems, energy efficient components? And mix that all together and we're going to make a great big Christmas cookie here because what's happened in the past, and this is what I love bragging about, you'll see the case study that we'll present at the end of this presentation and IBM is doing a similar case study on our success with the University of California. You picture 
each university only getting a few million dollars every year. And the first year when we completed our assessments and got the data in and got everything in place for their capital financial plan, they took it to the powers that be, to the regents. They, they talked about the scoring programs for the FCA. They took it all the way up to the General Assembly to the state of California. And the first go around, they got $125 million. The second go around was $325 million. And the reason for this is the accounting professionals now know all the way down to the level five item what has to have immediate attention. Like surgery, you're going to go in and fix one little item to maintain the building because the paradigm has shifted. And the reason the paradigm has shifted is for years and years and years, everybody's been asking for level three items over and over and over again. And they've played the same game over and over and over again. And really nobody's gotten anywhere. The numbers keep getting bigger and the funding keeps getting smaller. Well, now the people with the fiduciary responsibility of going out and saying, hey, yeah, boss, I actually replaced this. They can go to their boss and say, yes, it was done. They can go to the Regents Board and the Regents Board can feel comfortable with the money that was spent and how accurate was it spent. And they can go back to the General Assembly and tell the General Assembly, we have completed our fiduciary responsibility. We've made data-driven decisions and we can be audited. That was innovation and that's sustainability because every item we put in there is new, is current technology. So I love that part of it, but we're going to go there. We're going to break this down. Um, the whole facility condition assessment. I'm going to make it really easy for you. This is a nice definition. This is an APA definition. I love it. It's great. I'm going to keep it very simple for you. If you were to put your building in your hand, I, you know, laws of physics, things of that nature, space-time continuum, let's just put that to the side for a moment. And you wanted to know how to conduct your facility condition assessment to get your current needs addressed. The first thing you're gonna do is take that building and turn it upside down and shake it until everything that doesn't belong to the building falls out. And when everything falls out, what's left in that building is what you need to have that building function. Your electrical systems, your plumbing systems, your HVAC, your roofs, your doors, your windows, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That is what you're gonna focus on. That is what we're gonna primarily focus on for this presentation. And that's the simplest explanation of how we're gonna define this. It's FCA in a box, and I'm gonna give you a roadmap. And you can take this roadmap anywhere because there's actually, we talked about the credit for this course. You're going to go through a, a university level course at the end of this, at the end of this presentation, and we're going to break down each system for you. But right now we're going to talk about construction estimates, assets, how you're going to put them in there, preventive maintenance schedules, uh, work management issues, you know, it's all going to come together and you're going to create projects and you're going to be able to create these projects with multiple opportunities to meet the needs for what you need for your building life cycle, for what you need to do for your capital assets. So the puzzle gets weird. You got to have a clear picture. The top one I put apples to apples. That's important with everybody. And, and I'm gonna, this one for the University of California, and understand this is the entire state. If those of you who are not familiar with the University of California system, um, there are 12 different sites, you know, 10 different university sites. Um, you know, University of California, Los Angeles is, is just as complicated as the University of California, Berkeley, which is just as complicated as University of California, Santa Cruz, and they all have unique issues. The seaside universities have salt air that abuse them to no end, you know, that shorten life cycle models, that they have certain issues to deal with. Apples to apples, we had to come up with solutions that fit the entire state, and we had to look at catalog items that actually mean the same thing. If a fan coil unit is called a fan coil unit in Santa Cruz, it had better be called a fan coil unit in the University of California Riverside as well. That's a big part of it. Another one on here I'll point out is the data analyst. The, the analysis of all the data, once that in it, that's primary. Having a good QA system is primary. The bottom level one on the left-hand side, everybody knows this. Everybody in the system knows this. If we can give a data-driven decision, it eliminates 
a lot of the internal politics and a lot of the internal things that take place. The the professor of philosophy doesn't have a whole lot of control over that his building's falling apart. But if we use data driven decisions, we could probably address that better. There's still going to be some of that decision making process that's going to be politicized, but that's going to be way outside of our pay range and the accounting professionals are going to have to deal with that. We're more concerned about getting apples to apples, getting the data in and making sure we present a data driven decision process. So you got to make the puzzle work for you. You're going to develop an FCA program and you want to obviously optimize everything you do. You're going to optimize your portfolio. You're going to optimize your inventory status. You want to optimize everything. So let, let's put some of the pieces, the puzzle together here. FCA in a box. It's going to give you a ready made facility condition assessment solution. You're going to be able to do this. You're going to know all of the basics of this as we go through it and come back to this presentation. All you're going to have all the pieces to build a robust FCA program, clear step by step assembly instructions. You're going to take it right out of the box. Holistic facility life cycle management foundations. You're going to support and improve your portfolio. And with this, you're going to get a data driven decision. And I'm going to I'm going to hammer that one home. That might be a test question. Keep that in mind and no hall passes, but data driven decisions. That's where we're going to go. And we're all on the same journey. Now, now, I love this slide and I want you guys, everybody that wants to use it, I'll let you know right now, steal it, use it, have fun with it. Because all of our clients that we deal with and everybody we deal with are going to love this as well. There's no Daticus. No Daticus is some of the customers that hire us and we go out to their sites and they have no data. Uh, you know, it's hunt and gather is needed. Decision making is just instinctual. Oh, it failed. Quick replacement. These are a lot of your run to fail areas and we're, we're, we're trying to evolve beyond that, if you will. So then you come to the pro pro pro, pro, pro paper us and these are the guys that have it all on paper. Uh, decision making, of course, is the speed is paper, you know, your filing system, filing cabinets. I like to look at this as the 80s version of getting anything done. And you better hope your personnel know what they're doing because it's all on paper and the lag time there is just ridiculous on time. Even getting things funding had a serious lag. It's much better now. MS Officus, this is our hero. MS Officus, uh, we've evolved a little bit. We have spreadsheets, we know how to use Excel. I'm proud of everybody. Our college graduates out there can put it in MS Officus, but the thing about MS Officus, even when they evolve, you get the silo system and it's in a silo. And you would be surprised, even our nationwide customers and, and, and you know our university customers, our higher education customers, K through 12 customers, a lot of silos. And if you go to any IT person or any programmer, silo is sends cringes up and down their spine. But because it's very good information, they put everything together. It's in their silo, but it's not in the format you need. Uh, it's got to be downloaded here, downloaded there, reconstructed here, and you lose data in the process. And it's still functional. There are some data driven decisions that come out of it, but they're all based in the silo and doesn't necessarily get to the accounting professionals the way you need. But where we all need to go, you all want to go. Homo Ipatium. Now, this I love because the crews, the crews that we train, we all the teams we work with. When the team walks into the building and we're doing a level five assessment, everything that that team member puts into that iPad loads up directly. And at the end of the day, everyone from the facility manager, building manager, all the way up to the president of the university knew the current status of every piece of equipment that was touched and every building that was touched. And the unique part about this story, about two weeks ago, UCLA was called out and they said, we need you to come up with X amount of dollars for projects because we just got funding and we have eight hours to get this done. And I love the answer. The guy said, well, what do you want me to do for the other six? Because he had all the information in the system and it was available and ready to go by opportunity, by project at level five. The homo iPad in one. But let's keep going here. Let's go back to the playbook. This is just going to be a quick layout, and all this is is a little map of where we're going here. And as we hit this map, look, focus on the end, how you're going to justify your needs and how you're going to optimize your portfolio. That's where we're going to go here. So let's let's touch on this one, the playbook. 
step-by-step -step guide for setting up your FCA program is you want to ask what you're going to inventory and inspect. This is the apples to apples scenario. What do I want to inventory? Am I concerned about the half inch ball valve that's connected to the domestic water line in the basement utility room? No, not necessarily. But am I connected and really attached to that fan coil unit that I have to do PM on? Yes, I am. You have to make those decisions before you start your FCA. And then you got to decide how to perform the inspections. What are you going to do? Personnel assigned, so on and so forth. How are you going to record them? How are you going to set risk conditions and scoring? That's important. I know that's just one line in there. You would be very surprised how the risk conditions and scoring make a difference across the board for your buildings. The one thing I would recommend there, whatever you do, make it consistent. Make it consistent. God help you if you change the something scoring in the middle of the process, you, you're going to have fog everywhere. Uh, using RS means or costing data. I put RS means in the presentation. There are many, many options out there. RS means is a good starting point. Uh, right now we use our own catalogs and we, we customize our own catalogs with the UC system based on the feedback with current geopolitical situations and the cost that's coming back with a, with a replacement cost of what they're doing. So it's active and it's current and it's updated. That's what's setting up the local cost adders based on the contractors or other. We're actually getting contract feedback immediately. We have an entire loop set up to where that works. Then you got to build your FCA team, uh, and these are your basic FCA key components, but let's keep rolling. The RS mean side of it. I'm going to touch on this just a little bit. Uh, RS means is a great starting point. Uh, there are other things out there. The best thing that we did with this, we, we launched into an RS mean starting point, and we started building our own assemblies. Um, we started putting our, and, and let me explain assemblies. When you're doing an FCA and everybody knows the uh, ADA requirements for restrooms, and each state has their own ADA version for what they want. Some are more stringent, some are less stringent, but l let's address what happens during renovations here. A restroom that would require a renovation just because of old fixtures or they want to upgrade to ADA, once you cross a certain threshold, you're required to do the entire restroom. So we created an assembly that became a catalog item specifically for the restrooms to address it by stall, by section. And once it increased, a, increased past a certain threshold, it did the entire restroom. And that became an inventory item and that became a cost added item, so on and so forth. So we can go directly to the library for any item, set up the life cycle for that restroom, create the cost for it, and or do major repairs and replacements required on what we've seen and based on what we've seen and made it one inventory item. So you don't have to enter separately electrical, mechanical, and plumbing. It's one item. So you can customize your catalog to fit your system and not necessarily broken down by independent item. You have some options here. And again, this is important when you decide what you want to inspect. Now, also included in this box, A, Workplace Solutions, FCA in a box, here we go. We're gonna integrate adapters, of course. We're gonna set up data sources. We're gonna set up files. And this, this is your catalog. These are your assemblies. Uh, for the specific tools we're using for the University of California, we're using Ecomet, we're using IBM Tririga. We look at all the FCA project and tasks, uh, opportunities, risk condition scoring, which I'm gonna hammer on a lot. That might be a test question. Uh, that's extremely important cost adders and inflationary costs and geopolitical situation, which is not necessarily on the slide, but you need to be aware of them. One of the biggest thing we ran into in the past eight months was copper costs. And everybody who suffers through any plumbing upgrades will tell you a 300% increase is nothing to sneeze at. But these things have got to be included in your box. They have to be considered. You got to pre-configure these things. So we set up a mobile application. Um, for our, the University of California, we were using FieldFlex at the time, uh, and now we're no longer using that. We phase that out for an independent uh, use inside the UC system for Tririga with their own mobile app. But you have to decide on the mobile app you want to use in order to maintain I, I, what, iPadian, homo iPadian. <laughs> the field work where you used to go out and track things down, write them down on clipboards and things, th those days those days are gone. You, you can use, Ecomet has a good mobile app to it now, Tririga has a good mobile app to it. 
and it just simplifies your creation and collection because you're going to have your library in your system. You pull it up on your app, you load it into the building where you're at. And when you walk away, you're done. It It is streamlined. It is very fast FCA complete wall to wall done. When your inspectors leave that building or that site for infrastructure, it's done. You have the data you need. And, and, and I want to talk about the direct line again, just to make sure we hammer this home. When you walk away from that building, everything that was done in the field that you need to make a decision on is in the boardroom six to 12 hours later, as soon as the software updates. That's fast, that's immediate. That is direct line support for your accounting professionals to show their fiduciary responsibility for the money that's being spent and the work that's being done. And it promotes, I love this, data-driven decisions. Just make sure, and I will, I will hammer this one home too, Make sure the app is easy to use. Don't make the app so difficult that, you know, you got upload problems, download problems. Uh, there were some numerous things and we learned some serious lessons going through this before we finally settled on the, the app that we're using. And, and now it's like butter. It's smooth. It's smooth. Um, let's talk about justifying your needs now. Evaluating the results. Now we're going to specifically focus on deferred maintenance here, but the capital renewal side of this and the life cycle needs of this will, will fall into place because I'm going to be specifically focusing on the strategic needs of the building to get the immediate needs addressed. Again, we want to stay away from that old paradigm where you ask for billions and billions of dollars and you only get a percentage of it. So we got to prioritize the needs. You know, what's mission critical? What's not mission critical? You know, for a university, that does medical and they have a lot of labs. Yeah, they're pretty mission critical. For the university that has a potting shed, you know, that's out behind the police administration building, not so mission critical, just so you can get an idea there. And we have to evaluate the needs over a period of time. So you're gonna do an initial check. You're gonna check your records, which, you know, for the most of the campuses, you'll have maintenance reports, you'll have replacement items that take place. And when things get funded, you actually go back and change items in the system and update them as they're changed. That way you can consistently address your needs and what available funds you have left. And we all know what a headache that is tracking it in large areas. Now, getting a, a, a good seat at the leadership table, and this is where data-driven decisions I'm gonna really help you out, especially with facility managers and you know asset managers. If you go to the table, showing the level five assets that need to be replaced and they're properly scored and you've set up the criticality for each one of your buildings it's going to be hard for anybody not to listen to you that's sitting at the table that's holding the purse strings for your funds i guarantee you, you'll you have more success doing it that way than the old paradigm and the, and the model they were using prior to that but you're, you're going to create a new dialogue and the new dialogue is going to support your outcome and it's all going to be optimizing your portfolio and providing data-driven decisions. Let's have some fun here. I love this one. All right, I'm going to walk you through it. I love these slides. These are so much fun. Here we go. Create a standard FCA process. You're going to set up asset, your inventory, and you're going to log your deficiencies. This, this is basic here. This is real basic, so follow the line. In order to do this, this is your team. Your architectural inspectors, your electrical inspectors, your mechanical inspectors. Now, this is for facility condition assessments. We also do infrastructure as well. We did infrastructure for the UC system. And for the infrastructure side of the UC system, I also added, you know, just as a side note, uh, we put a civil out there and additional electrical for medium and high voltage. So your team is going to be dependent on what your needs are and what you're inspecting. This is just for the slide, but this, this is what I would recommend for the basic team. Now, we're going to look at real property. All your facility systems and components, especially on the infrastructure side. Uh, and, you know, here we go. Visual non-invasive. We're not going to be digging in the roofs and coring in the roofs to give you core samples of your roof. That's not this. This is visual inspection only. Now, you're going to initiate all of this. You are the FCA lead. You're going to make this happen. You're the manager. But on this part right here on the slide, 
in it says asset catalog. Now remember, I said you're probably going to start with means, or you're going to start with something to set set up your own restrooms, if you will, your own projects, if you will, that are pre-built into the system. The ones we like to use, we like using a standard classroom rebuild, we like using a lab rebuild, and we like using restroom rebuilds. And we made them as independent asset catalog items. So your catalog is so important, however you set it up, so you can create your inspection items. What items are we going to inspect? Which ones are we going to look at? What are we going to do? You have to answer these questions. Here we go. You also have to look at unit of measure, linear foot, square foot, yada, yada, yada. Total quantities. Now this one, this one's unique. You're going to discover that with your systems and regardless of where you are, this is going to be very unique. And I'll give you a really good example here. Uh, because of the PMs on fan coil units and how they're located throughout the building, uh, the end measurement of this would be by floor. So they did PMs for the fan coils by floor set what was best to match the shops because the shops were doing the PMs. So the inventory was set up to match what the shops were doing. So all of the fan coils were done by floor. Now I'm going to say that because it's important to reach out to each one of your shops that are doing the work to make it not only easier to get the work done, easier to get the PMs done, but easier to address any opportunities that surface in the system so they can actually match it. You don't want to write something they can't do. Now, here you go. Establish your life cycles. Uh, life expectancy. I mentioned earlier, poor UC Santa Cruz is on the coast. Those poor students, surfboards, you know, rough times, you know, ocean view. But the facility guys there, oh, they got it easy. That salt air doesn't eat up any of their HVA systems. It doesn't shorten the life cycle of anything. Now, if you believe that, I got a bridge to sell you. But the truth is, it does shorten some of their life cycles. So it has an adjusted life cycle based on your location, based on the elements you're exposed to, and certainly based on the environment, harsh environment. So you always want your end service dates. You want what remaining life you decide on these systems should have. Now, means will give you a recommendation. Uh, other systems will give you recommendations as well. There's some industry standards, but I'll let you know if you, you walk into an area where you have the salt air beating you up like that and you try to use an industry standard, you're going to find yourself very disappointed with the results. Now, risk scores and the consequences of failure. You know, you want to write up, hey, is it high profile, low profile, immediate need? Uh, is it a one year term, two year term, three year term? How quick can we turn this around? Uh, what's the location? What is the asset that it's attached to? And for God's sake, help us all take a photograph. I'll tell you how important that is. When you come back and do the updates and you have the part number, serial number, manufacturer number in there in your FCA system, and then somebody, you, nobody knows what maintenance does. They come in and replace things as they need. You get the work order. You finally get it into the system, and there's a lag there. So by the time you come back for the reinspection, it may be a whole new item, and then you catch it and put it in and create a whole new opportunity, a whole new system, and address it properly. Without a picture, it makes it much more difficult to do that, much more difficult. So please add photographs to your condition assessments. Now, inspectors, you know, evaluate the standards. You got exceeds life. You've got no longer reliable. You've got not functioning design. You pick and choose your own, however you want to make it deficient. Uh, you create your deferred maintenance issues. You follow along You say, okay, you want to create an opportunity. There's your asset catalog again. There's your standard class again. You see how this is feeding back to it. Create the deficiency, unit of measure, quantity deficient, and justify the criteria. Yeah, the likelihood of failure. How soon may it fail? You really have to depend on your pro professionals for that. Look at your maintenance logs. Then look at your cost by location, unique conditions, again, the salt air, base costs, in house cost or contractor cost. You have to address that. Total risk scores this is where you come up with your color coordinated, wonderful pictures, and they're going to give you your apples to apples for your asset inventory. For your renewal, deferred maintenance. And your risk management. Data driven decisions. Remember the seat at the table. Uh, part of this is I want to address the life cycle of the facility. You know, we just we just ran through how to set it up. We just set up the whole box for it. But let's took it a, take a look at a general life cycle just for any type of facility. The one you picked up in your hand that you were going to shake around, it had to be built. So there was some new construction. 
you know, plan, design, construct, there it is. They're going to commission the building, which means they're going to go in there and balance the HVAC system, get it ready for occupation, and then cut it loose. Then it's going to go into operation. And then your maintenance personnel are going to maintain it. Okay. Then you get down to, you know, the point where this next line hits us is renovate, upgrade, improve, and modernize. And then, of course, the next one is decommission and get rid of. But that's an entire life cycle of a building. And each building has a different life cycle. Your metal building is going to be different than your stone constructed building, you know, steel frame, yada, yada, yada. You have to look at that. So now let's go to the Asset Management University. Hock them. <laughs> Glasses in section. Okay, so let's go back to apples to apples. Now that you've got a good idea of how to lay out your FCA, and you know you got to measure apple to apples for each one of your locations, you see how important the data analysis, analysis is. You're going to get a seat at the table. You're going to bring language to the table now because you can talk about data-driven decisions, uh, your, your cost estimating, your build-out, your optimized your portfolio. You're ready to go. you got your facility under control. You know what you're doing. We've, we've got this whole box set up. This, this is now laid out from one end to the other. You know what you're going to use for your application, for your mobile app. You know what data you're going to pull from. You've built your own catalog. Now you got a seat at the table. Uh, the puzzle, just to make sure we're not missing anything. Here's some of the questions I threw out there and most of the questions we run into that you want to answer. So as you're going through this and setting this up, these are the questions you want to answer yourself as you're setting this up. You know, how are you going to analyze it? How do you build your system out? You know, you're going to buy one. So here's the checklist I, I provided for you. This is Let's say you're in front of a customer, or you're doing this yourself and, and change this checklist however you see fit. This is just for the purposes of this little exercise. You know, are you going to do implementation? You're going to do the original customer catalog or going to use RS means? Uh, are you going to be hosting it? Uh, are you going to provide training? Are you going to ask somebody to get training? You know, what are you going to do for updates? Uh, you know, are you going to buy licenses? You're going to have e-commerce license. You're going to try regal license. Are you going to do subscriptions? Even if you're sitting there not as a client, but you're uh, sitting there as a Parsons individual and you're talking to a client, these are the questions you need to ask before you you go any further, so you know how to set up and what to set up. So feel free to use this and do with whatever you see fit and have fun with it. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Um, here we go. The facility lifecycle management part of this. Pay attention to the four blocks in the bottom here. You're going to have real property assets, core functions, best practices, and that's just to integrate everything into your into your workplace. Your performance is going to be measure and manage, driving the operations. This is pretty cut and dry, decision supporting. And look, I highlighted data-driven decisions. This is where you're going to get your seat at the table. This is where you're going to convince everybody the money you need and why you need it. And here's your accounting professionals answering for it. And of course, your optimization, you're going to transform your own, your own world. You're going to transform your own world as you move away from the old paradigm into the, the new plan and how things are driven. Did something really neat here. We laid this out. Here's your apples to apples comparison for framework and use this framework. Modify it if you want to, but use this framework. This this is really cool. Your asset portfolio. Here's your building. Here's your portfolios. The highest level of what you had. When I first opened this up, we talked about the car. You know, the entire car was level one. Then address your sites. How many sites you have? Where are they located? And is salt air? They don't have salt air. Is it buildings, infrastructure, lands? real property, how many facilities on each site, what services do each facilities have? I wanted to put nuclear on there. If we got a site that's nuclear now, I would have had a nice nuclear symbol, but that would have been cool. Uh, you know, what you're going to use, you know, you're going to start off with Uniform at 2 you're going to use RS means, you're going to build your own catalog, you're going to build your own items in your catalog based on your construction information that you have with your local contractors, our feedback from within your own university and the cost that you have to deal with there. And I will let you know that, that the unique part of running your catalog after you've established it is watching how everything changes really fast based on the cost you have coming back from internal work and from contractors. And it really helps with the estimating. It is awesome. 
uh, you know, you're going to address what you're going to look at in the buildings, floors, roof, basement. Remember, I said you pick it up with your hand, you shake it, and everything that falls out is not part of the FCA. That's where you want to be. Then we talked about different, you know, items that you wanted to put in your catalog. Like if you wanted to address specific square footage areas, we have one for laboratories, we have one for restrooms, and we have one for special classrooms. So we have custom items in our catalog to address that. But we also have non-addressable spaces that you'll have to consider, mechanical spaces, items like that, utility tunnels. God help the individual that has to walk those. Uh, associations. Now, this is in here because remember, some of this is going to fall out of the building, but we have to do some kind of associations here, especially when it comes to labs and especially when it comes to, let's say, police stations. We don't want all the weapons falling out of the police station when we pick that building up and shake it out, but we're not assessing weapons, but we may assess the safe, things of that nature, just as an example. Allocations. Who gets what? Who's responsible for what? These are the people you need to have at your table when you're putting together your items that you can go out and sit at the table to get your funding. And of course, your stations of people you want to deal with. And this, some people have gotten to the point where they're actually logging in activities and rooms and activities and spaces to ensure they're being used properly. And that's going to be outside of the FCA realm, but that'll be in the design realm, but it may be considered as part of your costing. That's the only reason that's in there. And then, of course, assignments. Who's going to do what? So your asset management university, you're going to address the strategy now that you're done. You're going to have your economics planned in. You know your entire system. You know your organizations and your people. And you're going to create your capital asset portfolio. Well done. You guys are doing great. Now, this is a little add-on. This is just a flow chart if you're working from the bottom up or start off at the top left. You're going to do capital planning and work your way down here for a 10-year plan. Manage your missions. You don't want to go out and just do an FCA and say, hey, I'm done this year. You want a long-term plan to maintain this. And use this chart. I just put it in here as a filler for you guys to use and take back with you and say, all right, you know, this is a really good idea. But you're, you're going to use all of this when you develop your FCA. You're going to use, you have to use all of it. Let me just put it like that. And you have to develop a master plan for what you're going to be doing. And you have to set up a time period because everybody sitting at the table is going to want to know the results in a timely manner. And they're going to have expectations of that data happening, just like I talked about with UCLA. The guy had eight hours to get it done. He cracked a joke. What do you want me to do the other six? It was already in the system. It was already there. The data was there. All he had to do is punch it out and give it to him. Here's the projects I want. Here's how we fund them. I want everybody to be in that mode. I mean, we're in the digital mode now across, you know, even across the world. There's no reason to be at no data because no reason at all. So lay out your portfolio profile. You want to write out your objectives, you know, for the university systems, obviously, enrollment, housing, support services, your land usages, your grounds. Um, the space adaptation. Seismic is really big in California. We had to roll that one in there. We had to roll in some other technical items. But use that one as you see fit. Different parts of the nation have different areas and different needs. Uh, infrastructure needs, again, energy, water, waste, roads and sidewalks, tunnels, bridges, uh, utility tunnels, God help us, landscaping for campus design. Consider all of these things, depending on how you want to start. Now, I don't want you to drain the ocean in a day. You may just want to start off with a simple FCA and just look at buildings before you get to infrastructure and build your system. You may just want to do one item before you adapt in energy concepts, before you adapt in sustainability or, you know, your D, what is it, decarbonization issues. Don't try to drain the ocean in one shot. Building in space. Here's your little profile layout for you. This is just a sample. And this is just for one. And we can break down the room. Uh, you can break down offices. You can break down your hazardous storage areas if you have any. But you build each one of these items into a portfolio. So the next time you go click on that building, you can actually pull up all the rooms, what they're being used for. Is there any seismic projects needs, life safety project needs? And can it all be addressed by floor, by a building? Remember the breakout. You can go all the way up to level one or you can go all the way down to level five. But if you don't go to level five first, you can't go to it later. Now, two things I put on here for everybody to get a really good look at. I mentioned the, the case study. 
uh, for the University of California. There's a link on the right for that. Uh, it's an awesome case study. Uh, I didn't write it, but I was a part of it, so I think it was fantastic. Yeah, little little sunshine there. The next case study is being released by IBM, which is coming out shortly, where they did a direct impact review of our services to the University of California and the success of those services when it comes to funding and making data-driven decisions, which worked out really well. Uh, on the left, obviously, the uh, at Parsons.com Assets Management Program hit on that. And congratulations, you've all graduated. Uh, we'll be passing out certificates to everyone. You'll be walking down the aisle. Make sure you pay for the photographer at the end. <laughs> Here's your conclusions. You're going to be able to plan a budget now. And if you do well and you program this well, you could probably set up a really good cycle every three years, every five years, and select the buildings you want to do every three years. Select the items. You could do one third of your buildings one year and have a continuing program every year until you complete 100% over the three years to move to the next. You're going to use your data driven decisions to make you successful in getting your facility needs addressed. It's hard to fight the data. It's really hard to fight the data and you're going to build cohesions between all your managers and teams and everybody else because you're no longer going to be in no daticus mode. Now the University of California, it really demonstrates that case study. It really demonstrates. The integrated capital asset management program. Uh, the surgical strike, which we like to call the level five surgical strike on the building to keep it running, to keep it going. And then the asset integration and the cohesion comparing apples to apples and making sure that the entire region is treated equally. You know, not one university is going to peel out over the other ones. And it's worked well and it has credibility. And that's the reason why it's being focused on nationwide. And I do believe this is going to be the paradigm shift in the industry for how things are going to be done. Uh, I will leave that open. Jordan, you have the helm here. Jordan. Uh, thank you, Hayden. <laughs> um, that was a great presentation on elements and how important it is to do facility condition assessments. Uh, if there's any questions from the audience, you can either raise your hand uh, or you can enter it into the chat and we'll read it out. Um, see, we've got a couple. Uh, so first question is from Daniela Sabin. How long does it typically take to assess a facility? Mm, that's usually based on the square footage. I'll give you a really good example. UC Berkeley has a laboratory. It's called Stanley Labs. And the mechanical rooms alone are two stories. And to get the level five assessment for each one of the VFDs and the la, 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 you know, it was five solid days for the mechanical person in those two levels of the floor for 600,000 square feet. The electrical person was probably about four days. The architecture was about four days. But for level five assessments, you're going to find that the meat and potatoes of the entire operation usually falls heavily on the mechanical individual. Now, a lighter 50,000 square foot single story building within four hours, maybe five, and you walk away and all the data is complete. And that's assuming that 50,000 square foot building is not a lab, just a simple admin building. So that gives you a range, but there, there's no quick answer for it. That'll give you a range. Next, please. Uh, as I say, uh, James Schutz uh, has his hand raised. You can unmute yourself and ask a question, please. All right, thanks. Great presentation. Um, a lot of content and a lot of good detail. So so thank you for uh, going through it um, with the team. One question I kind of have here, I'm thinking about the, uh, uh, the deliverable reports. What kind of flexibility can you build into them in terms of, you know, end user, um, data processing and even, you know, something that can maybe funnel into uh, a dashboard or something to help uh, digest the information. Um, yeah, in great a, question. In a convenient way. Great question. You know what? I should have put that in the presentation. Great question. Oh, my gosh. Uh, OK, so I'm using two items right now with the University of California. We're using eComet and Tableau. The uh, report presentation for eComet is directly addressing the facility needs index and the uh, life cycles, if you will, and it, it will print out the reports from there. Tableau is our slicing and dicing software we're using right now because we can break it all the way down to the individual item and the individual building on any campus. Uh, and, and it's working 
wonderfully uh, because as the system is updated through Tririga and eComet, 12 hours later, it's updated in Tableau, it's immediate, and everybody knows across the board. Um, I've seen some other items used. I've seen uh, some individual programming items used, but I'm thinking that um, for for the lifecycle items that we're using, the, the eComet version that we have is really good. Uh, for the FCI, the eComet version is really good. For the individual data tracking, slicing, dicing for the opportunities against the University of California, Tableau is, seems to be the winning hand right now. Yeah, how did you uh, um, end up on with Tableau? Did, was there a, a process and how did you vet it against some of the other um, dashboard apps? And I say that because we use Power BI a lot in our group and I recognize oh, okay. some of its limitations and you know we want to do things with it. But um, Well, it went through steering just, committee, brother. Okay. Yeah, it just went through a steering committee. I was pretty much force fed it at that point, but once it got mm -hmm. through the steering committee, uh, it, it was passed down. Uh, the steering committee is the UC system. So, okay. you know, we're, we're the contractor for those, so we certainly want to serve them well. And then when they say we're using Tableau, you know, you salute and move on to the formation. So, yeah, 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 got it. Yeah, that's, no, that's how great. that played out. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I see is another question. Um, I hear Chokshi, if your hand raised, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Thank you, Jess. Uh, hey, Hayden. Hey. Great presentation. Um, one quick question is, uh, is a physical presence required to conduct a FCA? Can you leverage the 360 cameras by being, you know, the, the SMEs can stay remote and have local facility managers walk through the facility and do a FCA? All right, you I'm going to you've hit on a great question. Let me answer this twofold. That is wonderful. So with the UC system, we actually work with hybrid teams and we, and we work with university teams. So I'll use University of San Diego as an example. They farm their own team to physically walk the buildings. And we go and audit them. So th there's the hybrid team and then we did most of the universities ourselves. At a and R, which is agricultural and natural resources, they have some of the same cookie cutter buildings. So they modeled, and, and that's what we did for that, is we modeled the greenhouses. And there are tons of them. Oh my gosh, there's lots of them. You think agriculture, you know, and I have so many greenhouses. Uh, but we modeled the buildings and we had the facilities individuals walk through with the photographs and we audited the photographs and the equipment from there and we did it at desktop. But they were they only chose to do the greenhouses. Each customer may have a different opportunity to go different routes, but I wouldn't recommend it outside of any cooker cut cookie cutter buildings because the in short, mechanical systems, although all buildings are supposed to be the same, hey, you got two five system, you got the, I have found so many different things that have happened over the years in service to the building that has changed the system that I wouldn't recommend cookie cutters like in admin buildings or housing. Uh, if you stay with the simplest ones, yeah, you could probably get, you know, desktops done through that route and model them through that route. But, you know, in doing that, you know, think about this. When doing that, the scoring is going to be impacted because if you cookie cut the scoring on that, all of your greenhouses are going to have the same score. I would still recommend somebody walk one individual walk it down after that, even though they can get it cookie cutter into the system. Yeah, thanks for that. Boy, that that's a good one. I may have to change my presentation on that one and add something to there. Appreciate it. Uh, we have another question that came in through the chat uh, from Steven Self. Uh, he asked, what are some steps to becoming a facility assessor? Are there certifications or other qualifications uh, sought after? OK, so the, the way I've done my team and this is specifically to Parsons right now. Uh, but, you know, for hiring practices, I usually look for either in the field, engineering, architecture, or otherwise. Uh, I like using a lot of U.S. Navy personnel, U.S. Army personnel, Marine Corps personnel that worked in facilities. Then when they come in for junior assessors, I like to hold the qualifications that if they work as a junior assessor and they're escorted by a senior assessor, they have to achieve 3 million square feet in a period of time in order to move to level of assessor. And there's a level for assessor that's set up and there's a level for senior assessor that's set up based on square footage and types of buildings that they address in each independent field. So if you could be a junior assessor in architectural, you could be a junior assessor in electrical, but you don't know much about mechanical. So you're, you're not gonna be a junior assessor in mechanical. 
uh, once you achieve assessor in architectural and you're still a junior assessor in electrical, it's how you use your team members. The other thing I like to rely on is the independent study courses from FEMA, which really help out with dam assessments, levy assessments, and individual disaster recovery assessments for buildings outside of their professional knowledge of what they bring to the table. Those independent certifications through FEMA actually add credibility to your program as well. And uh, for those individuals that are technical and they're not degreed, it also provides college education credits for each course they complete. Uh, I really like to promote you know, the crew and help them get a higher education and move to better jobs. Of course, I hate to see some of them go, but it always helps to give them uh, a leg up into qualifying programs to move them forward. Then uh, most of the junior assessors are escorted, I would say 100% of the time until they complete their first 3 million square feet and they go with a senior team. They never go out alone. I wouldn't let anybody go out alone like that. You can let your senior assessors go out alone depending on the buildings and depending on what they're doing and their mass qualifications. But I would never mix qualifications for personnel that you send out. So if I specifically have an architecture, you're certainly not going to send them to an electrical punch or an architecture or a uh, mechanical punch. Uh, see if that see if that's what they're looking for, if you would, please, Jordan. Yeah, I don't see any more questions. Um, if there are anyone okay. else who had a question, you could either raise your hand still or enter it in the chat. Um, oh, actually, so uh, Stephen Self responded that uh, he came from FEMA cost estimating himself. Oh, cool. There you go. Yeah, like Matt. Matt did that. Yeah. Uh, so actually, I have one question, maybe to wrap it up if there's no more. Uh, what's the most uh, unique or challenging facility you've ever assessed? Stanley Hall. The labs in Stanley Hall with the clean rooms in Stanley Hall and the special requirements uh, for heating and cooling along with the steam requirements, uh, chilled water, it has everything. Stanley Hall has everything that you have to assess. And it was not only challenging, it was terribly exciting because when you actually see the design work for what they're doing with the research and, and how they're playing it out, it, it's just awesome. You want to walk in there and, and grab every piece of mechanical equipment and follow it down the line to see where it's going and assess what they need to do with it. Uh, from the architectural point of view, it's a, the aesthetics of the building are very pleasing to the university and to the students. So the architect that was traveling with me just it, it loved it. Uh, the poor electrical guy may not have liked it so much because everywhere he turned, there were panels and everything else. But it was time consuming. It was one week in the same building. Uh, and that that would be the most difficult and trying one, especially with the clean rooms. Let me add this. Lick Observatory in Mount Hamilton was probably the most fun. Uh, being able to test the security lights at night to ensure that security in the infrastructure side was done completely well. And look, and oh my goodness, the telescope is set up. I may have to check the lenses. And those guys are really nice. They actually let us look around at some stuff. Got a nice shot of Saturn and, and uh, Jupiter. So there, there are fun opportunities to doing this job. And I tell you what, I've, I've done it for a while. And it, it's a fun job because you get to Scooby-Doo everything you walk into. Every building's different. You got to figure the mystery out. It's great. Jordan. Uh, and a question came in from um, T. Adil Chaudhuri. He asked, uh, great presentation, Hayden. Are ASHRAE audits a natural progression for business development? Wow. Wow. I could see that. I don't, you know, I could see it. Uh, there's going to be a lot of energy complications there. I, I don't know if the industry is there yet or not. But I could see it. I, I I know that's not very helpful, but yeah. Uh, okay, uh, I don't see any more questions. You want to go to the next slide? Sure. Uh, so thank you to everybody for joining us today. This was actually our last webinar of 2022. Um, we are working on the lineup for 2023. So our first, uh, our next webinar will be in January. We'll be posting information about uh, that webinar and the rest of the 2023 lineup uh, in the next few weeks um, prior to January. Um, so thank you again for joining us today. We hope to see you in January 2023.